Welcome back, everybody, to the ultimate edition of podcast Shut of up. Magic Finance. Oh, I thought that was good. We're like the ultimate podcast of Magic Finance. What do you think? Like the last one? We opened the last one. You're the last episode for, for with a, with an f bomb. So that probably takes away from our ultimate status. Also, you or making that joke removes ultimate status. It wasn't a joke. It was a you're a it joke. It was a pun based on. Whoa! I'm podcasting from the road this you're week. You're podcasting from the toilet. You're podcasting from the toilet. No, I finished with that. Ugh. Now I'm now I'm sitting in bed podcasting. Man, come on. Oh, I hope you wiped. <laughs> who says that to somebody? <laughs> Someone who I say to my two year old all the time, and I feel like I need to say it to you also. <laughs> Huh. You think Corbin my two-year-old would t- got very? You think Corbin would miss an opportunity to actually use toilet paper for once in his life? He's in a hotel. <laughs> <laughs> Dang! No, there's big a little here. there's a little hole over in the the countertop, and you press the lever, and water comes out. <laughs> there must be I a did, little I boy did, down I, there. <laughs> I stayed in a Days Inn over the weekend, which was not nice, and I booked it, and it was the second cheapest hotel on the Hotwire that I booked. And then I got to the staff hotel for the pro tour, and I did take a picture to show people how nice it was. So you're not entirely wrong that I was. Why would you stay in the second hotel. cheapest hotel? <laughs> Do what? It's not nicer than the cheapest <laughs> hotel. Sometimes it's worse. Uh, maybe, man. I thought it was a little safer than just like the actual cheapest, but it was like sixty dollars a night. Was it a Motel hmm. Six or something? Jesus. No, it was a day. It was next to the Motel Six. It was a Days Inn. He did. He did say it was a day. Yeah, you got to get the value, man. You got to get the value when you're on the road. Just like the 13 hours I spent traveling on Friday. Do they not I got pay you all for my your money's travel? Worth. Well, I don't know what you mean by that. Like, do they not pay you to stay there? And yeah, I get a stipend. Okay. I'm cracking my beer. I, I need that. You do need that. I get a. I get a stipend. Yeah, it's fair. Ooh, man, I smell that already. Like, I how long's yours been sitting, Rob? In the days you can in, stay in a cardboard hotel, box like... and keep your stipend, but it's not worth it. Ooh, that's <laughs> I, I booked my hotel like two days before the GP because I procrastinated. So I don't know, man. Desperate times. Anyways, Corbin Costler, I know that's what people came to the cast for. Let's talk Ultimate Masters. That's obviously what everyone wants to hear us talk about. It's what we've all been talking about it all day on social media and telling people what's up and getting blocked by people and arguing with people today. and educating people. I had eight strokes today. Whew. Whew, that's a lot of strokes, DJ. Like... Oh, what impressed. are you, Clarence Carter? I'm impressed, man. I I usually only make it like two strokes and then I'm done. You know nobody's going to yeah, touch you that know one. That, you know that was funny. Come on. No one's going <laughs> to. No <laughs> one's going to touch that. You know that was <laughs> Kinda funny. Kind of like Corbin's actual troll dick. No one's going <laughs> to touch that one. I can't. If Jason made that joke, you all would have been dying. That was a great oh, joke. Because he's You're funnier welcome. than you. I agree with that. <laughs> yeah, I'm funnier, therefore I get to make the exact same joke <laughs> and get a better response. Those are the rules of comedy. Yeah, you're right, you're right. Anyway, so let's start at the top, Ultimate Masters. It's like $350 MSRP a box or something. This set is like one it's of actually, the best things it, to happen to Magic in the past five years, and anybody who says otherwise is wrong. Whew. Or they're just trying to drive uh, people to their YouTube videos. Or they're just trying to drive me to a blood clot in my brain. See, I think I think that you're right about it being good for magic and you're wrong about people's motivations. I think that people I think that people fundamentally don't understand the way the secondary market works with these things and I think that it's our job to educate them. But uh, I, I don't think that it's disingenuous necessarily. There's one so, ne- there's l- one l- downside with this entire set um in the past week. There's one. Okay, what's that? Uh, the ma- and it's not even like a downside that affects a large number of the population. It's just like one awkward thing that happened to screw us over as a vendor at GP Atlanta. Okay, so like the way that the cards were previewed on mass, like zero cards being previewed Friday morning, all of them being previewed Sunday night, means that, yeah, that throughout the entire GP, every single time a card was previewed as one of the mythic, uh, not mythic, but like box topper thingies. Box yeah. toppers. Yep. Um, so none of us knew what that meant. It could have been a mythic masterpiece thing where they're not available. It could have been a buy a box thing, which it is, Um, but like none of us know. So every time one of those is like, oh, Krakus is in the thing. Mikaeus is in the thing. It just gets cut from our bio list, and we just can't buy it anymore for risk of losing a ton of money. 
So, like, it's awkward for the players who are, like, bringing that card up and being like, I want to sell my EE. We're like, no. And no vendor in the room is touching it. So, it's just kind of awkward. But everything else about this set is Fuego. Before we go any further, Rob, we forgot to introduce you because you just used to be. We're just used to having you on at this point. So, oh, everybody, we're welcome to Rob. Hi. Is this the this second time on? Uh, second or third, but at least my fourth attempt. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know about how many times he's actually made it to the final podcast. Do I know how many times I've gotten a Skype call with him? Quite a few. Uh, so, no, yeah, but, but, welcome, but welcome on. Rob is a patron of the show, so he's going to be guessing this week, and he picked a good week to guest. I mean, picked yeah, his... a lot uh, of stuff going on. Pick, like, he, <laughs> fate. He, fate yeah. picked it. Yeah, well, at least I didn't have to follow Gavin, so... Yeah, that I, I, you know, real talk, I, this is my first episode back since the Gavin episode. I was really proud of that episode um, for us as a podcast. I think it was one of the better things that we've done in a long time. So uh, everyone and it, listened that, and that's it. entirely that. because of our camaraderie and just the way me and Jason did that. Like none of that episode should be none of that episode credit should be given to you or Gavin at all. It was all just me and Jason. I mean, I wrote the questions, yeah. and we Corbin and I got uh, Gavin on the cast. Corbin just kind of read and I got them. Gavin on the cast. <laughs> yeah. So, yep. so what did you do exactly, yep. Corbin? Yeah, you guys are you're just in the you're in the back of the bus, just taking credit for driving the bus. You're like, I poured the gas in the gas tank. You couldn't go anywhere without me. Somebody's got to drive, that, man. That's true. You did tell us what order to uh, <laughs> ask him the questions I wrote in, and it ended up being the order I wrote them. So I way asked, to drive the bus. I asked multiple <laughs> questions myself. Get out of here. Anyway, so I'm going to hit you guys with some stats real quick from Ultimate Masters. It releases December 7th, 2018. That is... That's all the intro my man gets? Yep. What, we got a lot to talk about this week. He's a special guest. He has his own special guest. You want to talk about your special guest, Rob? Yeah, it's a 120-minute uh, Dogfish Head IPA. Well, that's well, that's good. what a coincidence. I'm drinking a 120-minute <laughs> Dogfish IPA. And I was going to drink a delicious. Bomber of CBS, and then I was like, maybe I don't need a whole liter of 12% beer on this podcast. I mean, I so have, a, I have you a talk me out of it. all ready to go, so... Uh, we'll do Founders next time you're on here. How about that? Sweet. There you go. Uh, the second wave of 2018 Founders CBS is out there, uh, and I'm not going to get you any. Sorry. That's okay. I'm still uh, I'm still getting Barrel Runner from the local stores, so they've got so much of it, and I am drinking all of it. Yeah, I, I filled up my fridge with Barrel Runner, too. Um, if you don't get Founders where you live, I'm sorry. Um, they're crushing it with their Barrel Age series. They buy bourbon barrels on the cheap, and then they use them to flavor all kinds of different beer. And some of them suck. And then sometimes they take a boring ale and age it in rum barrels, and it's the shit. So I do enjoy bourbon barrel beer. It's uh, I, I the first time I had some like five years ago, I thought it was disgusting. And the last couple of years, I started trying it again. Like since I expanded my beer palate, and it's been much more enjoyable. This 120 has been chilling for about a year. I have one in there that's been chilling for two years. I don't want to crack that one. So, oh, it's nice, nice, year. Man. How old is this one? It ages real well. No, well, it doesn't say. I think this is this year's. So. All right. Let's, uh, you guys ready to talk magic? I'm ready to yell We're going to have to people. dive into it. Do I get to yell at more All people right. on Twitter? You, you will. I'll, dude, give me a second, and then I will, I will turn you loose, man. All right. So, the set releases a month from now. So if you have a good beer like uh, Dogfish Head 120-Minute <laughs> IPA and you'd like to drink it out of this handsome drinking glass like the one I'm holding here, just go to patreon.com slash brainstormbrewery and pledge to give us a mere $20 a month, which works out to 4 or $5 an episode. That goes a long way towards uh, getting Corbin a microphone so he can take a dump while he podcasts on the road and getting us uh, you know, new guests to come on the podcast and the... Uh, incredible amount of shipping it's going to cost to reimburse everybody that bought one of those terrible t-shirts I designed. <laughs> oh, Jason, that That's reminds true. me. I had a couple uh, come up to me at the GP and tell me to give you shit about not shipping the glasses because this poor girl was considering buying glasses from the Brainstorm Brewery store for her significant other for his birthday, uh, but she was a bit concerned about whether or not they would get there before December, early December, so... That's... The ones that people buy through the store, I will ship out that day. Yeah, that sounds I love awesome. My that sounds so nice. Brewery glass, it's great. <laughs> so I, if that couple is listening to the podcast, Rob, right I'll now... give you new glasses in person, man. 
Just come by the if house. If that couple was right. listening to the podcast, it was a pleasure to meet you, and I did my due diligence by you, so. You did it. Yeah, and All if right. you're listening, yeah, if you buy them from the store, and you go, oh, shit, it's $5 shipping per glass, whatever, my significant other's worth it, I will ship them out that day. Yeah, that's great. Everybody else, you're going to have to wait a little bit, especially if you got the bad glasses within the last couple months. That is a uh, that is a very nice Christmas gift. But uh, I'm, look at me. I'm reaching down next to me. This is a box that contains a glass. I have um, 96 of them out of the 288 boxed so far. Um, that's that's what I do. So you should be upstairs reading my daughter a story before she goes to bed. Instead, I'm down here boxing up glasses for UA holes. What so. a bro. <laughs> that was a good punctuation there. Also describes most people's feelings about Ultimate Masters. Now we can talk magic All if right, you'd like. Great. All right, so Ultimate Masters, guys. That's a thing, $335 per box. But this is the interesting part. You can also buy them in three-pack blister packs at big box stores for $35.99 per three. Uh, so Those are going to get the the titty shit shoplifted out of them, I would think. Probably. Yeah, that, but that is oh, that is only two eighty for the for the twenty four. So right, but it, you don't it, get so, the box topper. Right, so that's the thing, and that was the first thing I wanted to talk about here is that there's a lot we're going to get into. I, let's start with that. That we've already seen some boxes sell on eBay pre sell for under three hundred. Um, we know that I think you, you said two eighty if you were to buy twenty four. Um, in the blister packs, you don't get the box topper. So what that means is the box topper is not necessarily free value. In fact, it's not at all. It basically adds, it's being priced at, you know, around $50 per box. Now, some of them are clearly going to be worth far more than that. Some of them are probably going to be worth less. You know, some of them are a lava claw reaches. Right. You know, or yeah, or your kitchen finks or, or whatever, right? They're probably going to be 20, I, I will bucks. Gla- I'll pay 50 bucks for that kitchen finks. That kitchen finks is awesome. I mean, maybe and maybe it will be 50, but I, it I may. I mean, remember the people that were bitching about the Ornithropter Masterpiece yeah, and now that's like 100 now. bucks yeah. and a lot of them are 40? Right. Yeah. So if there's a lot of people to play Finks and Legacy. I mean, and Modern. That that card will that card. Yeah, I mean, I, I have F and M promos of it, which is really cool. But I love the the new art as well. The card's awesome. So the thing is, if the average value of the box topper is over fifty dollars, then you are getting better EV on buying a box uh, from your LGS, uh, which I believe the boxes. The blister packs are going to be at big box stores, and the boxes are just at LGSs. Is that true? That's what that I is heard. the okay. yes. Yeah. So so honestly, also but... these aren't the um the box toppers aren't a thing being sent separately to your LGS. Right. They are sealed physically inside the box. Right. So I, I'll say up front that one of the concerns I had before we knew any specifics about this, and we just saw the previews of the box toppers, is what it would be because Wizards has, you know, you know people want to talk about taking the Wizards just kind of hurting LGSs and all this different stuff. And I, I will admit I was a little concerned that after the fact they were being sent to people who interacted with the Hasbro toy shop, that these box toppers were going to somehow be related to that. So I'm very happy to see that they're in the boxes and not, not any other kind of thing. So it does seem good to me. It seems to get people into the store. And if the average value of one of those is more than 50 is $50 or more, you're going to get a better value buying a box than you will blister pack. So with that said, all the, promos we've seen are insane the the cards we know in the set are absolutely insane it blows any other master set out of the water and we have the accompanying um increase in msrp which people are understandably very upset about so i i think one of the most important things we want to do on this cast is is take this from the position of us who have been in this market for you know, forever at this point and know how this stuff works and have an understanding of the the back end of the economics on these things that maybe a lot of people don't. So DJ or Jason, do you want to, you want to just go ahead and take that and explain in a nutshell how the MSRP of the box corresponds to the EV of the box and what it means for people? Hey, uh, DJ, the dong layer expert. So uh, you can go ahead and take <laughs> okay, this one. Go ahead, DJ. Okay. So I have been fighting a crusade on Twitter today, trying to explain to people in sometimes less than nice terms that, single prices from this set will drop 
Uh, I think there have been a lot of arguments and a lot of misconceptions that because the box price is so high, people think that people uh, players will not purchase the box and that will leave them sitting on shelves and that will leave the cards not being opened and that leads to Liliana dropping $10 or not dropping at all. That leads to reanimate, that leads to through the breach, just not even dropping at all. And that is incorrect. Um, over the past five to ten years we've had several master sets and every single time uh i mean we've had two we've had two increases of msrp the first was for mma where it went from four our normal oh four dollar packs to like seven dollars a pack and people raged about that uh and Ma modern masters as a set dropped prices overall divinity of pride crashed from 10 to 2 uh engineer explosives a lot of other cards crashed doubling season got destroyed a lot of prices fell there was the uh scapegoat the Tarmogoyf. yeah the tarmogoyf the uh i was trying to think the straw man or whatever you want to call it tarmogoyf straw man's i think yeah. the right well and, and tarmogoyf was in a, a, a pretty unique position because a lot of mma was opened at gp vegas and dealers everybody opened a goyf just took it to the dealer because they were paying 90 percent right. of dealers uh, had them from the first yeah. So let's let's, and then, let's talk so, about well, go the ahead. follow up to that is we saw M MSRP increase again with MM twenty fifteen. It went from seven for Masters Pack, which everybody had sort of like, eh, sure, whatever. This set's got a ton of good cards. It went from seven to ten, and that was viewed as this extreme. Oh my God, nobody's gonna spend two hundred forty dollars in a box. Nobody's gonna pay that much just for this chance at a Kiki Jiki Always Dust box. This is ridiculous. Um, and spoiler alert, a lot of people bought those boxes, and a lot of card prices crashed because of it. While the Mythics didn't necessarily get destroyed, it's not like we saw Tarmogoyf go from, like, 150 to 70. Uh, we saw Noble Hierarch get cut in half. That card was 70, then it was 35 for six months. We saw a ton of other, uh, Eldrazi. We saw a lot of cards just get destroyed. Splinter Twin, um... Ivu get, like, just a lot of MM15 cards just got crushed in prices wilt leaf liege uh and, fulminator mage yeah. and what happened was they met their stated goal which wasn't let's crash prices there was what's increased card availability yes. for a ton of those reprints they put thousands more tarmogoyfs into the market and the price didn't go down that much but like these people had a chance to buy a tarmogoyf for and seven dollars the a overarching uh belief by a lot of players was that i'm not going to pay that much for a box therefore i will extrapolate my own viewpoint and sort of expect nobody else to pay that much for a box but um people will spend money on these boxes the i actually i'm actually really curious as to what the breaking point is because i don't think this is it i think you could make a master set with twenty dollar booster packs and people would still sell out and as long as the the hype is there if it's justified yeah, as long as yeah. the cards are there to justify the hype if it's full of jaces and snaps and lilies and um back to basics and like all these like all these absurd cards people will pay that uh the first the most expensive msrp product before this was the mythic guild edition and everybody knew it would sell out it was limited, it was hyped, it was like, oh, this is $250 for a bunch of packs and then eight cards, but we all knew it would sell out. And this is going to be very similar. People, uh, there will be whales who are like, I'm going to drop 5k on this, this is great, I want all these cards. And there will be gamblers, there will be people who knowingly accept that risk and say, I might open garbage, I might open $500, but I want to spin the Wheel of Fortune. And as a player, as somebody who doesn't want to spend $14, $15 on a booster pack, if you are somebody who wants to put together a modern deck, you're waiting for that Cavern reprint, you're waiting for that Reanimate reprint, you're waiting for that Demonic Tree reprint, if you're in that position and you were considering buying a box, but now you are priced out of it at that 40% increase... You, it is in your best interest for you to let those whales and let those gamblers take that hit for you. Let the vendors do their thing. Let them process and buy the boxes at distributor cost. Sort the cards, process them, list them, undercut each other. And then as a player, you are the beneficiary of all of these cheaper prices. You are the one who is winning when everybody cut, undercuts each other at Noble Hierarch. And then it goes from the 70 it's at now to the 35 it will be two months from now. And that's where you win on the singles prices for these cards because... There are a lot of cards in this set that are worth money, and it's just like a normal set with like Guilds of Ravnica, like Dominaria. Not every card in this set can sustain that price point. You can't just have a set uh, with an MSRP of 14, and you can't just have the expected value of a booster box be 20, because then that will just number crunch wrong, and the 
right the economics right. So, of yeah, that equalize out so you're going to see cheaper loans that's the point yeah that's the point i think a lot of people maybe don't understand and and, and in brief what it means is this with the first modern master set the msrp was whatever it was, it was seven dollars a pack seven the, no the, the first expect, MMO yeah. was seven yeah that's what i understand so whatever the, the box price was right is whatever seven times 24 okay so that's your msrp of a box the value of the cards the expected value out of one of those boxes it was because it was a limited run were higher than that it, it, it was you know the peak of people jumping into modern people just wanted it, and there wasn't enough yeah, product well, nobody out there. nobody paid seven dollars a pack for that box right. either like, the msrp was seven i guess, but the, I guess the my, my store sold them at my store sold them at msrp i think most of the stores in my area did not everyone will some will i understand that um but so here's the thing. What happened there is what you're saying. No one paid that for outside of a few lucky people who had an LGS and those 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 supplies lasted for, you know, three days or whatever. But what happened is that because the value was so much more than the MSRP, if stores tried to be honest and sell at the MSRP, people would just flip buy the boxes from them and flip them themselves. So then stores jack up the price to meet the value, or they just cracked it for the singles. Right? So it didn't actually matter what the MSRP of the box was because people were selling it for more because that's what the value of the cards equaled. And that was not what Wizards wanted because they don't want dealers cracking the boxes to put the singles onto the market. They want players to buy the product. That's the whole point, right? So with the next one, they corrected. They increased the price and they kept the EV about the same. Um, and it led to a situation where Modern Masters 2015, I think, was pretty reasonable right it accomplished its goals people were upset about the msrm piece but but you know it kind of equaled out right 2017 i think was really good eternal masters i think was pretty good but you'll notice that on all of these the sets, best master set to date yeah and it was this, insane yeah, yeah and this set is better than that one right right so so what happened is when those sets released and i'm including uh the the the, the two bad ones masters 25 and um, iconic. iconic masters even when they release iconic is starting to look better now is, yeah. iconic is really good it looks it looks it, pretty it, good now. it had a lot of six dollar edh cards that it smashed but those are all recovering so even though the big the big stuff isn't like recovering as much you got a bunch of austere commands that you bought at two like bucks and you get seven a box for. still looks like a steal on right. it for I, the most I agree part. so there's so many cards you could you had a chance to get for one or two bucks and then they're gonna be seven again you'd be like when did that happen so the thing is well, when they release it's the sets, 12th they, most played white card in edh who knew yeah they've done a really good job of making the msrp equal the value the expected value yeah. of the box at least on release week and what that means is players are actually getting the those boxes for what they cost. So, if now so the sets that did bad, the MSRP didn't matter, stores sold them for cheaper, right? Cuz that the the market ultimately wins out and that's why you have boxes of those still floating around. Yeah, and now, the problem in the past, sorry, the, the problem in the past has been not all expensive cards are created equal. Yeah. Some expensive cards like Tarmogoy for Snapcaster or Liliana or whatever are expensive because of play, and those are always just going to rebound. They're just going to. But a lot of cards that if you choose – if your expensive cards in a set so that the EV matches the MSRP on release week are cards that are only expensive due to scarcity like Recruiter or whatever, um, then that's just – gonna it's just not gonna work out right because those didn't have the demand propping it up and that's how you get a master set that fails yeah when you get your chase card to be mana drain and imperial recruiter those are cards that were only expensive because of this extremely extremely limited print run from 20 years ago right. and then the price crashes because the demand isn't there to soak up the value so then your right. uh, wizards they should only put p3k cards in ftv sets if <laughs> yeah so me. wizards yeah. Uh... So, so the thing is wizards has this it's this balancing act that they have to do where if you juice the set too much for a lower MSRP like you did with Modern Masters, then it's not going to do what you want to do. It's not going to get to players. It's just going to get cracked by vendors, and that's not what that's not what anybody wants, right? But if you go too far the other way where you either make put too little value in there or the value comes in bad cards, then it's just going to tank after release, and that's going to leave people upset as well. So – Flash forward to now with Ultimate Masters, they can either – all of this is removed if they just printed it into the ground. The market would equalize, but they're not going to do that. Yeah, right? shout they, out to the one guy on Twitter who sets. said this should be sold at $3 a pack. Great economic theory. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, the, the thing is if it, it would equalize if they just printed it 
forever, but they're not going to do that because they have reprint equity. They want to sell more cards in the future. They don't want to sell all the Ultimate Masters in the world and then never sell anything They also don't want to bend over the guy who just dropped four uh, Cavern of Souls and four Hierarchs into his Humans deck. Like, you lose consumer confidence if the guy who just bought four Caverns and four Hierarchs has the value of those cards drop by 80 percent it's less of a knockout punch if you're like man i just bought caverns but at least they only dropped 15 dollars a piece um right so so and you wonder if some of these people have never been in franchises like you never had a card yeah <laughs> well, like if you're arguing from positions like i own nothing therefore it's only downside for me to pay more than three dollars for a, a pack it's, well i don't yeah so i don't so, have to tell so you so then we get so then we get to ultimate masters here and they for probably because the last two master sets haven't sold well, which you can argue because they were bad. Um, they've just they've at least announced that they're not going to be doing this for the foreseeable future. So they're trying to blow it out with Ultimate Masters. So how do, they're in this position where they recognize that maybe they went too far the wrong way with the last couple, but they 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 are very cognizant of the problem they had with Modern Masters One. So if they want to juice this this set with all these incredible cards that we've seen, what can you do? The only way you, you have you have three options. You either raise the MSRP so that the MSRP is at least equitable with the EV of the box, or you make it so that the EV is much higher than the MSRP, and that's going to leave the same problems Modern Masters One has. Or you decide to put it into oblivion. And I know that's what Magic players want, but you just have to understand: just Wizards isn't going to do that. That's just not an option. That's not how the because they works. they printed Chronicles into oblivion. Right. That's that's, that's what lit- they're trying they to literally avoid. have a financial responsibility, a legal responsibility to their shareholders to maximize money as a business and to make smart decisions as a business. And that means that they have they can't just be like, how do we sell the most ultimate masters yeah, if they, in the world? If you ha- how do I sell the most a, magic cards in the next five if years? If they wanted this to be a cash grab, which is the two most common words I've seen Ugh. on the internet this today. I'm I muted I muted cash grab as a phrase on Twitter <laughs> if today. If they wanted this <laughs> to be a dipshits. cash grab, it would have been like seven or eight dollars a pack and it would have done horrible things to the market. And they would have printed it forever. And it would have made cards cheaper like Players One and Wizards would have made a lot of money, but it sure wouldn't look very good for Wizards a year from now or three months from now or whatever, right? They have to sell Magic cards every three months. That means they have to hoard reprint equity. That is just the reality of the economic You guys model. heard the Gavin episode, listeners. You listen to what Gavin said. They're not trying to fuck things up. Yeah, so... They so, just want to get cards in players' hands. They want to make their products right. so, attractive. So there's there, there's all these things here, and you just can't... You just can't please everyone. So was this the right – is this – is a high-value set that has a giant MSRP better for the game overall than a lower-value set that has a lower pack price? Uh, spoiler alert, I don't know absolutely. Yes. I agree with DJ. As a vendor, I mean, I think as so somebody too. who is yep. behind the booth and wants to see more of these cards come across my buy mat and put more of these cards out and actually sell them, this set, again, like I said earlier, best thing to happen to Magic in five years. Right. Do you want to and know I how many people, Ancient I... Tombs we've sold in the case in the past few months? It's not a lot. Do you want to know how many right. Ancient Tombs I'm going to sell two months from now? Significantly. If they're $45? Significantly right. yeah. more. And I just think, I just think people don't understand that basic – reality that they can't make an msrp 150 fifty dollar box and pack it with this stuff because it just won't work it just players will not ever be able to get them the stores are going to jack up the price anyways or they're just going to take them and crack them for singles and it's not going to get what you want so what i see most often players complain about or talk about with master sets isn't hey i want to be able to afford to draft it which is what you could get with a seven dollar pack they say i want the price of singles to come down and it is my belief uh, and I think it's I think it is it is backed up by by the the economics of all of this that a high price set like this, like DJ said, you let other people put the money out up front. This is going to result in more reprints, more of these cards out there than any other set could just because of the basic economics of it. And it is my opinion that for the average player who just wants to finish their humans deck, this is going to allow you to do that for cheaper. Then something else will. No, you might not be able to spend three hundred and fifty dollars to buy a box of Ultimate Masters. I get that, and I sympathize if that's what you want. But it's it's just the way it works. You can't have it both ways, given the business model Wizards of the Coast has employed for twenty five years. 
And they've that's you know if people want them to do something if they want them to just print this into the ground and make and bring everything down and all of that stuff that's fine you're allowed to want that but Wizards of the Coast has never given you any indication that they would ever do something like that because they've operated under the same business model for 25 years and it isn't changing so I I just think you people are allowed to think whatever they want they're allowed to have whatever opinion I'm not even going to tell them that they're wrong um, I will you're allowed to be upset that's fine but like you're allowed to be upset that you can't buy a a booster box of this because it's really expensive, right? I get that. That is a reasonable complaint to have. That said, this is just this is just going to do what you want it to do in terms of getting the price of the singles down. And it's just it's just kind of the way it has to be. And there's going to be benefits to it and there's going to be downsides to it. Fewer people are going to be able to buy boxes and draft this, but you know what? Singles prices should come down a little more. Yeah, well, it'll trickle down, too. I mean, like, so I don't think that the box toppers are going to be quite as rare as people think no. they are. Mm-hmm. And so they're, like, people that want to bling out their decks, like, if you want four of the new Through the Breach and four of the new whatever in your deck, you're going to put those four Through the Breach back into circulation because why would you keep eight Through the Breaches when you've already blinged your deck out? Like, uh, it's right. a, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna free up the non masterpiece copies, is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, there's gonna be a lot of stuff coming into circulation after this stuff gets open. And actually, I was hoping to have a. I, I believe I'm getting a uh, a box topper from the disaster that was the Mythic Edition sale, and I was hoping I would have it in my hands today, so maybe I could open it on the cast. But it didn't come today. So oh well, that hey, been uh, sweet. <laughs> hey, my my buddy Burke got one. He got the second, no, the third worst card to get in the whole set. <laughs> what was it? Raging Ravine. Nice. Ooh, our our editor yeah. you don't, AJ got you don't want Lava board. Claw reaches, and you don't want Stirring Wildwood, but you also don't really want Raging Ravine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, it's supposed to be coming in the. It's supposed FedEx I think supposed to be delivered worse than tomorrow. Raging so. I think Tasker is worse than Raging Ravine too. Yeah, but Tasker can at art, least be somebody sexy sweet. commander. The new art it's doesn't bad. have bananas. It's strictly worse. The new, that new art so you can bad. you could get it altered. Have it. someone draw a banana because he's like pointing to his crotch with that whip. <laughs> he's like DJ. <laughs> <laughs> I, I consider the new Tasker unplayable because it has no bananas. He has no bananas today. You're going to say, I play the Banana King. And if people are going to be like, what the fuck are you talking about? There's clearly no bananas. No, people are going to say, I play the Banana King. And then you're going to be like, well, I play Merfolk. That card's unbeatable. (laughs) And then you're going to be like, hey, I live in Oklahoma. Our state vegetable's a banana. (laughs) It's a watermelon. Get it right. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yeah. I'm the one who needs to get it right. So, uh, so can you guys, uh, Rob used the phrase trickle down. Can you guys address the, um, Political the complaint that, that, uh, yeah. trickle down is like saying the prices will, will go down as a result of people buying these boxes at full prices. The Reaganomics trickle down theory <laughs> of MPG. Can, you, can we address that point that, uh, I'm not going to single anybody out has made. <laughs> Anyway, so the, the thing is, I mean, at the end of the day... No, we're not going to address no, we're that, not. I guess. We're, gonna let it go. we're just going to laugh at <laughs> it. That's cool. Let it go, that, man. That's what that deserves, I guess. <laughs> at, at the end I of mean, the it's day, a thing that happens. At, at the end of the day, this is going to... Pri- it's going to put more copies of expensive cards into the market than any Master Set has done previously. Maybe those cards hitting the market will come more disproportionately from the hands of vendors or whales as dj put it then it will the average fnm player but at the end of the day if your goal is for cheaper singles this is going to accomplish that better than a previous set if your goal is to draft with a set this sucks for you i'm sorry you know that that is what it is you never got to draft master sets more than once or well, twice anyway exactly really. and that's the thing is also, people complained also about people don't want it to be also, drafted they just want it to lower the prices also Magic yeah, my Online guess is when we find this at seven dollars a piece to so go wild yeah. yeah, but they're non-redeemable. So you still open, like, a Jace or whatever. But they're you, non-redeemable. Uh, J- Meanwhile, like, like, in six picks. months, Wizards is like, wow, Arena's really great. Go yeah, suck Yeah, prices it. on Magic Online are always shitty. Like, that's We're just getting not... rid of Magic Online forever. Prices on Magic Online are always shitty. Like, that's nothing new. Like, you still get the drafting experience of whatever. If that's what you're yeah. in for. I mean, yeah. My vintage deck online is, like, I don't know... Yeah, fifteen ticks. Because nobody plays it. What's your, what is your vintage deck online? PSMB. No, uh, uh, Power Surge is not online, unfortunately. 
Oh, at all? Unlucky. No, it's not. There you go. No, they never they never brought it online. All right. But no, like yeah, coming off of Eternal Weekend, like all sorts of crazy Eternal stuff happened. So yeah, I it, I didn't it, it, I didn't get to follow it because I was covering the uh, Turn Three Kill Fest that was modern in Atlanta. But oh. Eternal Weekend looked sweet. Eternal Weekend was cool. I mean, the games were pretty legit. That uh, time the, walk. Jesus, that time walk. The legacy coverage, I don't think... They haven't posted deck lists yet, so get on that, Card Titan. If you, if anybody <laughs> from Card Titan hears this, get on that. I, um, I know who ran the coverage. I'll pass it on for you. Don't worry. <laughs> All right. But, uh, yeah, the, the, the vintage was great. Because, you know, when does vintage ever get highlighted? Yeah. So And there were a lot of bazaars in that room. A lot of bazaars in that room. I heard a story, um, maybe you guys know about this, maybe not, and it is just a story. I saw someone on Twitter said that one dealer was bought out of more than a million dollars of graded alpha beta stuff. It wouldn't surprise me. That's, uh, that's ins- That sounds... I, I feel like if that happened, I would have heard about it. One, one person bought a million, or... Um, that... Like they just moved through it? Uh, could have been. I, I mean, it's probably, it could be some crypto man. There's some weird stuff with these crypto millionaires yeah. and just a lot buying of it's weird kind crap. Of retra- like a lot of the weird ungraded stuff is retraced a little bit lately. So like, yeah, I mean that makes sense come, for a small correction there. So hey, yeah. if we're gonna talk about graded stuff, I think we have the ideal guest this week because uh, Rob buys more graded stuff than anybody I know personally. I've got some stuff. <laughs> well, I mean, what do you think the if you're somebody who has, and, and for instance, I have a couple alpha beta cards, nothing crazy. I've sold most of them, but I do have some stuff, and I've recently buy listed some of it to Card Kingdom. Um, but is it worth it getting it graded if you just have generic alpha beta stuff? Not the, the top, top end, but, you know, just something that's Hill worth giant. 50 well, Hill Giant, or maybe a, a $40, $50 card out of the set, or a $20 card or something. You think there's. Do you think like that a there's. A common any is 20 bucks at this point if it's near mint. Like, yeah. the, the commons are insane. So, it's worth grading if you think it's going to grade a 9 or higher. And and a lot of that, too, make sure you look at your centering, because that's where I, I think a lot of people get screwed. Mm-hmm. Like, I've got a lot of stuff that's basically flawless, except it's a little bit off. <laughs> that and sucks, because there's nothing you can do about that either. <laughs> no, and there's nothing you can do about it. And the way that BGS grades is you can only get one point higher, like one whole grade higher than your lowest number oh interesting oh i didn't know that so like if you have so a if you have like a 10 10 10 7 that's an 8 that's an 8 oh, yep. that's rough Ooh. that's rough <laughs> Ooh. so like yeah there's some stuff that's just not worth grading if it's it, it, make sure it's mint because also to their backlog right now i've heard of something like six to yeah it's insane months to a year yeah, yeah that's crazy so unless you're well, well pay, hey, what do they what do they pay? Because I'll I'll go do that. I'll it's like them... no, it's like eight bucks to get it slammed <laughs> well, if you go Jason's into like asking a normal him about queue. a job application. No, I'm saying I'll Jason go work for them grade. and help them bust to the. This is going to drop everything, become a professional grader. Oh, God, I'll, I'll have that nothing. backlog taken care of in three months. I don't sleep, <laughs> motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah, I recently learned how little Jason sleeps. I assumed he got a little more. I just know that I got very little sleep before Ben started daycare. And I think Jason gets less somehow. Oh, I've been on third shift for like five years. I haven't. I sleep oh, like three hours a night. That's crazy, guys. It's, it's good. killing me. I, I don't care. Don't worry. I'll sleep when my kids are in college. Actually, I will because I'll be like, oh no. Well, I hear that they're I hear that banging you, frat boys. I hear Damn that it. as you get older, you need less sleep. So Jason, I guess, has that going for him over me. Am I a year older than you, <laughs> or like four years less than a year? Me, I thought you were both like dinosaurs. You just sort, you just sort more cards, Jason. That's you're all. like thirty-five. I am 34. Okay, sir. you're four years older than me. You're both so oh, old. Oh, no. What? Oh, my God. I'm the oldest person on the show. Oh, uh, get wrecked. killing me. You had a kid at 30? What was I that had a an kid accident? I 28, you idiot. My kid is two. Oh, my God. Was that an accident? 28? Well, you'd say irresponsible. I'm an that's, adult. That's, that's irresponsible. <laughs> are are you? Things get started a little earlier down in Oklahoma. I'm an kids, adult. Kids now, if you excuse 16, me, i got to end my magic podcast early to go play Overwatch. Okay, tell me more <laughs> <laughs> about what an adult you are. <laughs> Anyways, all right. So I asked on Twitter earlier if people had questions about Ultimate Masters they wanted us to address. I think we've hit the main parts without even being too ragey, so go us. 
Um, because we all had uh, a very excuse me. I asked a question too. I asked uh, if you heard the phrase "troll dong." Would you assume <laughs> it's a good thing or a bad thing? And seventy-seven percent of the people said bad thing so far. Seventy-seven. Go. Yeah. All know. right. I can so. I can power through these questions. How far do you see cards like Gorya's Vengeance dropping? Like ten ish, maybe maybe lower. Two ten dollars. Uh, gets obliterated. Yeah, Gorya's is like you mean, you mean two ten dollars to verify? Correct? Yes, that card is going to yeah. be worthless. Yeah, that card gets obliterated. I mean, it's it's predicated on scarcity. Yeah, uh, probably sure. lower than ten dollars. Uh, would you sell the box top or ASAP or long term? Sell it immediately. Uh, sell them. immediately. What's the cast Yesterday. guesses on the biggest shit rare slash mythic to be in the set? I liked that. That was a good question. In the set? Oh yeah. boy! I mean, it's going to be worse than Lava Dig Claw through. reaches. We know about Dig Through Time. That one's pretty bad. Yeah, that's not a important. mythic though. Yeah, Dig Through Time could be the the bulkiest rare. Yeah, I, rare yeah. I I, I kind of want to say this in here because like a lot of the box toppers are not at mythic in the set. That's they are correct. rare or uncommon. Yeah. That's a thing, and that's important. people are acting yeah. like engine. The set has forty mythics. It doesn't. It has fifteen. Engineered explosives is rare, and it will go from eighty to like thirty something. I think it has twenty mythics. I think DJ. you're gonna get twenty is mythics. 20? Yeah. Okay, 20 whatever, mythics. but it's still not all of them. Like EE's is rare. Yeah, your point stands. And, and at least there's gonna be at least one cycle at mythic, probably right. I mean, we know all the mythics, so no, there's not a white. There's yeah. not a white. And if and no? if the uncommons look like kitchen finks yeah. and uh, yeah. what's the other eternal like, witness is like fifteen bucks. We're gonna get mana yeah, like, for sure. That's a ten dollar card. There's no white mythics yeah. Yeah. for Krakus. Uh, I mean, Krakus is I, even I, mythic, but. I would assume lightning bolt. I would assume. No, I think Karakas is, it, is okay. mythic. So the worst, the worst mythic. Well, we know all the mythics. So the worst rare is probably Dig Through Time. Seizure. I'm I can't imagine it's right anything worse than that. Ooh, <laughs> that's the ultimate. Like yeah, that. but box top or siege rhino. Uh, would have been sweet. Okay, here's my question: Is Phyrexian uh, altar in the set? And if not, no, why? It, would have been a, it better goddamn. I think better it probably. Be. Not. I think if, if it was the set, they would have used it as a box topper. Remember when I told those fucking idiots to reprint that card when it was still twenty two dollars? <laughs> yeah, that's if it's not in the set, it's gonna be like a seventy dollar card. Easy. It's it is a seventy dollar card. Oh shit. <laughs> Alright, so I do want to uh point this out. There have been some people running the uh the E V and currently, based on uh I wanna make sure I get the shout out here correctly. Uh okay, this website doesn't have a name on it. There we go. Marcus Leben. Uh, writing for uh, Cardsphere, uh, ran the numbers and currently calculated if the sheet has 20 Mythics and 50 Rares onto a 121-card sheet, this is an underestimation of the EV. But considering it's it's not that, and it's – although I think it is, right? But considering the worst-case scenario based on what we know so far, this calculation numbers as of today, Monday, November 5th, put the EV of the set a little under $12. And that is uh, not even touching box toppers. Now, again, obviously it's going to come down, but this is also not well, that's, accounting that's $12 for $12 a pack, uncommons. also assuming like $0 value in the unknown commons and uncommons, right? Correct. Yeah, so it's that's like absolute worst case scenario, assuming every other card we get is bulk. This is an average $12 right. pack. At 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 this moment, yes. With, with I'm really assuming that this is going to be cube the set. So like, I'm guessing they're juicing that. Yeah, we're getting like right? lava I'm spike. Sure we're are. getting metamorphose. Probably, we're probably getting like. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> this is going to be so Rituals. fun to draft. Yeah. So, All right. So here's uh, a real, no. Here's a real question now. So if you're holding any of this stuff, when do you decide you know, to buy list it DJ or and I sell had a out? conversation about this yesterday. We just counted. We have 30 Cavernous Souls in my store. You have 30. Uh, don't loop me into this. I didn't. No, I said we okay, talked so about Okay, so when, when do you drop you the price? We. I said As a we retailer, about... when do you drop I the price? I shamed you for having 30 Cavernous Souls. You did. DJ did shame me properly for having 30 Caverns. Your store. price is too high if you're sitting on 30 Caverns. No, the price isn't too high. The price is market no, price. No, he just doesn't know how to sell cards. Well, then the people in your store aren't paying. He doesn't know price. how to sell cards at a GP, and it tilted me yesterday. 
It did tilt DJ because <laughs> I uh, I fo- we had this conversation about how I just focus on buying cards at the store and I just keep buying cards and buying cards and I don't worry so much about selling them. I just let the store do that, which is how we end up with like. Ooh, that is me as hell. 30. Yeah, I was about to say that's how I am as a person yeah. and a collector, but that doesn't help me in the long run. Yeah. I spent a couple know, grand a month on so cards yeah, and I haven't listed some so of them. So I have. Yeah, that's why we had thirty cavernous souls. So oops. That's why I have a job, box of. Japanese dragon's maze sitting to the Dude, right. Dude, that's of me. the other. Re- that's the other reason I love people talking about. Like, I think somebody you have tweeted. A box of- no, 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 no. What? We got a. You have a box of Japanese dragon's maze. Didn't we just shame someone for? They bought a, a case, of Japanese Jason. Dragon maze? No, they bought a case. I don't have no, a the, case. The person who I sent the original box. email was like, "Oopsie, yeah, I got sent that email. and bought a case of Japanese <laughs> dragon's maze." <laughs> Yeah, but he probably paid 120 yen, which is like 12, 12 cents. Yeah. Like... <laughs> no, for Jason, for as long as I've known you, I've been doing the case cracking thing. Like, you know, I've 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 got tons of sealed stuff, and none of it's worth a damn. Yeah, but it's fun to draft, okay? It's got social value here. I remember us Not splitting a case. <laughs> well, oh, excuse me, sir. Rob, I remember us splitting a case of original Ravnica three ways. Yeah, we did, and it was great. That's That was like total money. Yeah. Yeah, I got I all the plague boilers I needed to go fucking two and seven <laughs> at that event. Oh God, I still have a ripped apart plague boiler in my binder <laughs> from one of the guys at the shop getting pissed that he opened it and nice. he tore it in half. That's and I just awesome. Have it. I don't know why I have it. Uh, you don't. You, you keep stuff like that. Any yeah, exactly. ripped in half card is a story, and you keep stories yeah. in your binder. All right, I so Jason, I thought you were going to shame my probably listens there to the cast. Second. Oh, well, you're going to – those cards aren't ripped up. They're just – they've seen better no, days. No, and shame on you for not – for playing with that alpha stuff. You're insane. Ah. Yeah, that is that is somewhat <laughs> yeah, whatever, insane, but I like it. All right. Uh, that's, that's... Well, the centering's a little off, so it's yeah, not going to get it's graded like above a nine. Centering. Centering's off, so it's worth it. Do it. Oh, God, that's so – The centering's off, so just play it on sleeve. All right, so whatever. here's, here's Rob, another Rob, question. Rob, I don't use a playmat Go either. ahead. Uh, I don't care about the play. Does it use like, a play? Use a brainstorm no, like, play with the, If you're I'll a play patron, the ring on asphalt. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, did, yeah, like Richard I Garfield. Intended. That's what I mean right. by I don't. Listen, use a, I'll play it on plywood. I don't care. <laughs> First of all, real don't be men a savage use, like DJ. Real men use calls don't be a savage. Go to. Oh. Nice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Nice get that. Get that. No, brain no, 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 no. If. If you want a mat, go to patreon.com slash brainstorm brewery. Subscribe at the $20 level. You will get a brainstorm brewery play mat designed by Matty Studios. You don't have to be a poor playing with no mat like DJ with his jacked up cards. <laughs> Actually, Jason, do you still have that brain games mat? Like that, the super old school one? Oh, yeah, I do yeah. have that. Okay. That's like a $700 mat. Woo. In good shape. Mine's not in good shape. It doesn't matter. Like, okay. So, great. I'm on the cast. Let me talk about this anyway. Yeah, um, do it. Incidental stuff that you get while picking up collections is worth like a lot of money. This rabbit right hole people. is so dangerous. It is so dangerous, but like this is how you end up with three hundred fat pack boxes in your office. It is straw M and M's. I'm not. I'm not talking about fat pack boxes. I'm talking like marketing stuff, like vinyl banners and crap. I have like um. I have. Oh like, God, that yeah. Hey, remember we went to that random shop in Lansing by trippers and like we were just buying stuff and the dude had that like mat with the copper plate the time spiral what is trippers uh, it was it was a game store no. or it was a bar it was a no it was a it was a poker room slash comedy club in lansing okay, anyway just checking. rob took me to this obscure shop i never would have found on my own he's like yeah let's go buy and the dude had a bunch of kobolds of care keep and i bought nice. a bunch of kobolds for a quarter each nice. which was great and then he had this binder that was like leather and it had a copper plate that said time spiral in it and i paid 20 bucks for it and it turns out that thing was like super money but i didn't take care of it i used that as my binder for years and it got all cut up an idiot it's worth nothing now like if all the stuff i've randomly bought because i thought it was cool and then used and is all jacked up like was money if i just kept it sealed i I have some of these boxes that wizards sent out with stuff in the late 90s and they're just basically one row boxes, uh, yeah, one K boxes. Yeah, co- Are you talking got, about the ones that have the the they've got some, boxes and stuff on them? Uh, maybe I don't remember the arts. I actually no, those they know they, some of the arts they didn't those. send those out. They sold those everywhere. I got the blue one. Yeah, those are very those in are a Florida like game. Yeah, they're worth money. Stuff. That was the point. 
So I have yeah. them at my house just chilling, but I don't oh, know what to checked. do with them. Like, it's, I just don't want to list stuff on eBay and ship it. So this is the rabbit hole, man. I just ha- I have rule books from, like, 4th edition. I was selling so revised deck boxes for, like, $5. I, I think the rule books that are valuable are Alpha, Beta, Unlimited. Uh, man, I don't they're, think like, worth 3 or $4. Is... The rabbit hole's so Corbin. dangerous. Alpha, I Corbin. think, is worth 50 what, to 100 DJ, You have access to GPs and Facebook groups. You want my yeah, you want dude. my rule books, bro? No, I'm saying you can get on the Facebook group for vintage collectors, and half those people go to every GP, and then it's you're like, so, "Hey, no, I have these old boxes. Idea. I'll be at every GP. Hit me up," and then you sell them. That's a good idea, DJ. I should do. Yeah, that. I'm just. Yeah, I'm not saying go buy it. I'm saying sell it if you've got it incidentally, because yeah. I buy that crap and I want more of it on the market. Yeah, yeah. What do you, What do you want, Rob? You should just come by my yeah, house. Yeah, Rob. And buy I got. I'm old. sure I got plenty of old, useless stuff for you. Well, next time I'm in Oklahoma, which is probably never because it's <laughs> right. Oklahoma. You know what uh, else? Uh, I'll make sure to come to the I'll GP. Make sure to have that happen. Should we have GP? Should the Brainstorm Brewery party be GP Oklahoma City next year? No, it should be a GP Detroit. I'm gonna I'm gonna rep GP Detroit. GP Niagara Detroit. Falls. Okay, good suggestions. That's everybody. that's within a. I can drive to there. That's fine. Good suggestions for sure. Detroit I, people don't want to go to Detroit, and it's dumb because Atlanta is worse no. than people pretend Detroit is. I think Atlanta's fine, oh, yeah. buddy. I'm Atlanta's right a now. toilet. I am in the suburbs of Atlanta, and it's perfectly fine. Guess what? No one ever said to me in Detroit, "Hey, you white boys probably want to take a taxi, or you're going to get shot." That was never said to me in Detroit. We stayed in a hotel at for gp atlanta that had an armed guard our, like there was a fence our around B&B the place. yeah Detroit was, was it was walking ghetto. distance i actually um, learned about this i talked to somebody from atlanta about this recently like this weekend and they were telling me that atlanta is divided up into two cities because the city is basically it has a highway that just forms a complete loop around it right and then the suburbs are outside and he was telling me that the two just don't mingle if you go to the inside right if you go into the inside of the loop you're inside the loop and then he said, if you go OTP, which he defined as outside the perimeter, you had to have a whole new social circle. It was a whole different – it was just a different place and that this loop of the the, the highway surrounding the city. So you're saying your friend's down with OTP? <laughs> I, just, I just say so, that so this, Corbin, why, is, this is – So, Corbin, why are you in Atlanta? Let's, uh, let's, dri- let's drive the bus here. We're driving the bus here? I wish I had driven a bus here. I took a flight and it took 13 hours. Why would you want to take a bus from Oklahoma to Atlanta? Because it would have got me here faster than the flights did. It was a disaster flying out here. I'm here for the Pro Tour. We're going to play standard. All right. Dude, so you what, would what still we, be on a bus and you'd be itchy if you're taking a bus. What What about standard? What should we be looking out <laughs> for in mastery. standard this week? Which is Which mastery. mastery? Is that Oh, the, no, is no, that no. If you're, not, if you're not Allie and Tracy... You're not playing He's that not deck, the only dude. I've seen so, playing it at the I've score. seen so right, many guys, people shit the their pants playing that deck. Second mark. Oh, that's about time to wrap it up. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Yeah. I will about tell you time, that yeah. Ollie is probably is certainly I know for a fact not the only person who might be playing it at the Pro Tour, and it's just very yeah. But he's he's the right. only <laughs> people on the Pro Tour are the only people that should be. If you're at F and M, you're like I'm ready. Just congrats. You went to. Time every round, and you lost game one. <laughs> and it took you 68 minutes to lose game one. That's not how long you rounds are. Fucking Jason. idiot. They're Stop 50 it. Minutes. No. No. Five turns. Five turns takes 18, took 18 minutes. minutes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You're right. Yeah, Corbin. If they're playing KCI. Guess, who, guess, who, guess who's playing Magic again? Oh, it's this guy. And you he's... and Ryan both. I have to hear it from both of you. It's the worst. That said, I do have a standard. Hey man, deck. I put Beta hey, Lance. Hey, you know what? If deck. you can, if you're the kind of person that can send uh, a DM to Ray Perez and get deck advice, why would you not take advantage? I, of I that, agree. So. I've done the same. <laughs> it's a, it's a nice to have cheat codes like that. Yep. So, uh, you, so you're I'm, taking I'm playing a little of bit of magic again. I'm like just dipping my toes decks, in. But you don't message me about like GP Hotlist the day before. Fuck yourself. Look, Ooh. man. I I, I I feel like I have explained myself fairly well in that i clearly have been remiss about how many magic cards i sell because my goal is to own all the magic cards not to sell all the magic Your cards i mean i want to do that too but expert I'm more mg to finance are here everybody <laughs> actually hey. this is i don't know if i've said this on the cast hey, before. i i contacted the guys on card hoarder about getting the card hoarder twitter name because that's <laughs> why i, I want to i always tell I people that i always name. just tell people that they are one uh, emergency away from all their cards returning to their rightful home of me. 
That's... And what what do you want emergency away? Didn't you have a flood? <laughs> you, I have aren't you having cards. another baby? Like famous. Slash... When your fridge is gonna, you bought a bad fridge. That's gonna. I have shit. Who needs some money one of these days, you're gonna have cards, to. Jason. You're gonna have to sell all your expensive cards and buy a new fridge one of these days. <laughs> like. All right, I got another question <laughs> coming from Tom Barr here on Twitter. What is the who? ideal MSRP for a? Whoa, whoa, whoa! Set? Wait a minute. Does this guy follow me? Check and see I'm if he not follows going to me. Check if he doesn't, he follows you, Jason. What is the ideal MSRP What's his Twitter for a name? master set? It depends. Like there isn't one. Okay. They don't know yet. There we is, don't know. No, there's not enough data. They've done three master sets. Yeah, it, four. I five honestly master think it was an int- like this might be the best master set of all time. So th- like okay. fourteen. It was an interesting question, 14. given that DJ said earlier he doesn't think this is the breaking point. So I did think what the you know what the ideal MSRP for master set is. But like I said, I I said this on Twitter earlier too. I think it remains to be seen. And while I tend to agree with DJ on this, we don't know for sure. That I think in terms of making magic as a whole or modern or whatever we're talking about more accessible to players in terms of price of singles. I think that this might just be better for that than any previous master set. Um, and I think that at some point the MSRP, I mean, it matters, but it only matters. Like it, it, it obviously matters, but I think it maybe matters less than the value of the cards in yes. there and the number of cards that get reprinted. Yes. So I think like, I agree with DJ, but we don't have enough data to know this for sure yet. But I, I do think that it's true. That's just going to be very good. For, for singles prices for players. Can we do breaking bulk yet? <laughs> sure, man. Breaking bulk time. Breaking bulk time. Break, break, break. Oh, yeah. Breaking bulk. There's so much good stuff. It's a pick. Breaking bulk. The end. Breaking bulk time. Breaking bulk. 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 Breaking bulk. Mm, that, was, that was a very, very good story. Mark. Thank God we have you. Mark. All right, I'm going to go first. This should be easy. Hey, Corbin, Corbin, Corbin. Yes, Jason. Mark. Thank you for that. I only had a 120. Can you guys imagine if I drank that whole <laughs> That weeder? That, oh, yeah. dude, I'm on my second beer. I don't so know. Can you podcast? Oh, shit. Okay, can, hang on. I will go crack can another you podcast beer. I don't from the be... ICU. Yeah, I Corbin, do you think barrel, beer I, I is going to barrel put... runner? Look, look, dude, Rob introduced me to his own particular uh, brand of sangria that he makes with moonshine that you can only get in Kentucky because they don't make 180 proof <laughs> moonshine in Michigan. 90. They only do 151. You got to go to Kentucky to get the good shit. I was raised from a 22 year old on uh rob sangria has been training his body to be alcoholic for years that's what he's telling me yep yep exactly many years and given my, how old you are my fucking sensei is on this podcast with me <laughs> oh, so if i'm gonna go down from some beer and whatever yeah it's not it's not gonna happen i'm not gonna go down from some beer in front of rob fucking weather so let me go get another beer and you, you do your breaking ball all right man we'll i'll do my breaking to, ball. this should one. be easy but it's just one of those psa things it is a rivals of ixalan blue uncommon siren no, storm that's ixalan. No. it's the curious obsession it is Curious Obsession. For those who don't know, this stupid – and this is actually kind of an interesting case study um, in the way Magic card prices work. But So the Mono Blue Standard deck, the Tempo deck that Gabe Nassif top-aided the GP with, um, it's been a thing for about a month. But it's been – it's a budget deck. It's like $100. But it was it was actually kind of bad, right, at the beginning. It was just – it was sort of a deck before rotation. And now it's like still kind of a deck. And if not Nassif, maybe – you know, you're not going to do well with it. But regardless, it was a budget deck. So it's interesting. Anytime you see a budget deck, cards quickly become not budget. And even think how wild it is to have a $3 market price card uncommon in 2018. And that's what Curious Obsession is. And that is a function of how cheap the deck as a whole is. The value has to go somewhere because if it is cheap, Magic players will just build it. So... Like I said, it's just an interesting because, you know, we talk all the time about how it's impossible to have $3 rares or whatever in 2018 because of just the way the printing works now, post-myth, post-mythic era and all that. But we have $3 on common. Same with Siren Storm Tamer. And it's just all because a budget deck, enough people build cheap decks that they are going – the money's going to go somewhere, and it's gone to these uncommons. Yep. So just a PSA to look through your old Rattles Vixlon stuff if you ever manage to draft that and not hate yourself. Oh man, like if you, you can go through Rivals Ixalan stuff every month and it, there'll be new stuff. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's too bad. Because you know, uh, so. I, I comb through that stuff all. I I go through my quote unquote boxes of pick bulk, and uh, man, some of the stuff I missed just because it was a, a nickel a couple months ago, and it's like a dollar now. It's it's really crazy yeah. because it, it just seems like that rival that that Ixalan block stuff. It's just it's really perking up now, and well, it, it's, it's surprising. It's it's delayed standard reaction because it was all just so unplayable before rotation because it was just. Yeah. Entire format was just dominated by Call of Desh block. No, no one was doing fair stuff back then, and now it's like, oh yeah, you can it, play a. I mean, yeah, it's like it's even yeah, less. Yeah, you can play a two mana one three, and then you can just spend the rest of the game just exploring. Right. Yeah. It's 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 just very. It's a whole new format in a way that we haven't had before. And Ixalan came out a year ago, but in terms of standard, the vast majority of the cards never really had a chance until now, and that's why you've seen a lot of movement on stuff. And Sandard's great right now, for the record. Sandard is really fun. Oh, yeah. Right. I don't Jason, hate it. Jason, what's your breaking bolt? And I don't even play Magic. Okay, uh, I have a an uncommon that is red from Invasion. She even Harvest. Nope. In that was your invasion? pick a week ago, and I nailed it. Is an instant not an enchantment? Tribal Flame. That's a common. That's not an uncommon. I was close. Is it a common? Also, Tribal Flames is a sorcery. Yeah, Corbin, it's not Tribal Flames for so many reasons. Is it from Invasion? Is it it Breath of Doom? Oh, it is from Invasion. I did it. Get out of here. That's all that matters to me. (laughs) You thought I was trying to name the card. It's not Breath of Darigaz. Breath of Darigaz is common. I wasn't trying to name the card. I was just trying to guess if that was the right set it came from. The card is over a dollar as an uncommon from Invasion. Uh... Interesting. For a very specific reason. Over a dollar where? On the on internet, ED, on is Kelden Fire Bombers on Kelden Fire Bombers is rare. Is that from like what's prophecy? That? Right, that's a rare. You said it's red. The card, the card is Chaotic Strike. You probably don't even know what it does. I know that it's Chaos- thirty cents. Play where play on Chaotic PCG Strike player. only. During- play Chaotic Strike only. This is not a dollar during combat after blockers are declared. It's thirty you cents. You can't just man. say that Get card. Card Kingdom. It's over a buck over a buck That's all I care about. Them. Oh, get maybe I should get off their buy list where it's like thirty cents on the well, buy that's list. Great, so you can just man. arbitrage that's a great these thing fucking to things. Cite, but it's not a yeah, it's retail. like the actual buy list price. Don't just. <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna look up the buy list price anyway. This is cards worth picking out of bulk, wouldn't it, you agree? I would you agree fucks? with that, Jason. I didn't know this, so thank you for bringing this one to my attention. You fucks! This is a coin flip card. Okun and uh, Zinder split. Came along and made a bunch of weird cards expensive. This is one of them. It says flip a coin, so hey, there you go. Uh, it made the card... Uh, it made, like, one of the Mercanian Masks rares, like, 12 bucks or some shit like that. Like, flip a coin is just... It's a thing now. It like, because of... And, like, I pulled a shitload of Chaotic Strikes out of bulk that I bought from the LGS. Because they were just, like, a nickel. Like a year ago. And so. the other thing to keep in mind with stuff Huzzah. like this is if you pull it and it's not even on a buy list right now, Jason's right. Flip a coin is just a thing. And when we, even if it you don't get a good price on it on a buy list or it falls off a buy list or whatever right now, this is just one of those for the spec box or the long term box or whatever you want to call it. Uh, and two years from now, three years from now, when the next un- unset comes out and they go with a flip a coin theme or something stupid and they include Pokemon coins in the packs. Uh, this will be five bucks. You know, it's that sort of thing. Anything that's really heavily tied to a mechanic like that. And, and a unique mechanic. Right. And it's like, uh, yeah. So, like, even shitty cards like Aleatory. Like, Fiery Gambit went up. Chance Encounter went up above ten bucks. Puppet's Verdict, you know, hit five. Like, there's... Remember Frenetic of Freight was like $25 for like a day and a half? Like... Even yes. stuff like Creepy Doll went up. Oh, like, that's reserved it, list. What is? Frenetic of Freed. Yeah. But Frenetic of Freed's not actually the most expensive card coin flip card by far. Like, Chance Encounter's 11 bucks on uh, on uh, Card Kingdom. Puppet's Verdict is worth more than Frenetic of Freed right now. Like, Chance it's, Encounter's like there's all kind $3 of stuff. buy list, though. It's like 2 or $3 buy list. Yeah. Yeah, I like mean, Card Kingdom retail is... was not a real price point. Sure, but Neither his point is, your is mom. expensive, and that's that's a fair yeah. point. Yep. So even just like 
it's, some of that stuff is like I was about to bulk out that card because I didn't even know what it did, but I pulled it out of bulk just because it said flip a coin, and then I looked it up and I was like, oh, okay, nice find, shit, yep. There's there's all kind of anything that's like real specific to a mechanic. Maybe just don't bulk it out. Yep. I can bulk out stuff that's been like fog. You know, I'll bulk out a <laughs> fog because like, well, it's been printed forty nine times. But like some of the stuff that's like really unique to a mechanic, I, I tend to try to rescue from bulk yeah. and just put it in the long term spec box. So uh, this is something you definitely don't want to bulk out because it's uh, it's two cents on TCG Player and it's uh, seven dollars on Card Kingdom. All right, so. <laughs> there you go, <laughs> DJ Rob. What do you guys got? Uh, I'll go. I've got a black uncommon from Eldritch Moon creature. Vampire Cutthroat. It is. It's Vampire Cutthroat. Is that the Skulk yeah. card? Yeah. yeah. It's a good Skulk one. Lifelink for one black. But I it's mean, like it's like the one black creature from that set. That's uh, It's I... about 75 cents retail, depending on where you look. But, like, it's easily buy-listable for 25 or 30 cents. Like, you can pick them. I love no Eldritch problem. Moon as a set. There's so much good stuff. It's just... Eldritch Evolution is one of my favorite cards, for one. I like the evolved mechanic. I just love that set. Unban pod. Until they unban pod, it's all Eldritch Revolution. Eldritch Revolution is low-key broken. I don't even know if you... Uh, some of the decks that are running Eldritch Evolution right now in Modern, I don't even think you'd want pod. Pod seems slow I mean, compared I, to I that. I want Eldritch it Evolution. Because it's a 2X. It's a 2X upgrade. So you're just like, bam, right from 3 to 5, yeah. you're up in their face. Yeah, and it takes 3 mana instead of 4 mana and 4 life for like pod. I mean, it's just a good... Yeah. It's just an insane card. It might also be a little bit of... It might be playable in Legacy. I haven't exactly found Maybe. out yet. It's a lot worse against it. Force. In a Nick Fit type build? <laughs> oh, absolutely. Nick, That's my deck. It could so. be good Nick Fit. You take, uh, what, Veteran uh, Explorer into a, like, uh, Night of the Reliquary or something? Yeah, it's more, it's more like you, you go for the two drop into uh, Arena Rector, or Academy Rector, or Arena Rector, Ooh. and then go super broken. Also, Eldritch... Uh, Eldritch Moon has so many expensive cards in it for a set from this era that has rotated from standard. That no one gave a shit yeah, actually, about. Right? Um, like, you might even you might even actually still be able to get the boxes on Amazon for like ninety five dollars. I mean, it's just I'm going to name you guys a couple cards here, and these are just modern staples. Obviously, Liliana, but Collective Brutality, Grim Flare, Spell Queller, Selfless Spirit, Bedlam Reveler. These are all just uh, Thalia, Her- Heretic, Cathar. Like, there's just a lot of Modern, actual, staple, very powerful cards from this set. I actually, this is one of my favorite sets for like you know the next five years or whatever. Plus, it's just sweet. I mean, actually, the boxes might be worth uh, it. The boxes on Amazon right now are one hundred fifty. A... What are they on Dong Layer? I don't understand why you keep thinking that I'm mispronouncing that <laughs> yeah, but... when you're obviously just mishearing it. But all right, DJ, say it right now. The EV of an Eldritch Moon box is forty two dollars. To... On on what on what Dong on what's that what site? <laughs> He's a dong lair. I won't, I won't lie, man. It did kind of sound like dong lair. I heard dong lair. All right, yeah. The EV of an Eldritch Moon. No woman has ever escaped from my dong the lair. The EV of an Eldritch Moon box is forty-two dollars CCG low, whereas Ixalan's like sixty-four. So pass an Eldritch Moon. I, I do not like dong lair for uh, EV. Why not? Way. I know it's where everyone goes, but it takes because they don't take it anything takes so into many account. Things out of account. Which it does to try to have, like, which is how you very... get an expected value because otherwise you just like you can't. Their their expected value calculations discount things more than other people's expected value calculations. It just doesn't. It's fine. It's Literally not the, end of the, the world. only I'm just, things I'm just, that discount. MTG Goldfish. It's like every basic lands a the dollar. The only things it doesn't count are cards worth less than a dollar and foils. That's it. Yeah, but like. Foils add EV. It's not maybe a ton, but it is something. Okay, so add $1 for You're foils. You're going to get... 75 cent cards oh add boy. EV. Oh, boy. <laughs> this is not that relevant. <laughs> Let's move on. I want out of this layer. <laughs> I'm sorry. I I, I I wandered into the uh, the dong layer. I'm sorry. Rescue me. <laughs> Rescue me. Rescue me from the troll dong layer. Also imprisoned in the moon. Has anybody ever made this their pick of the week? I'm looking at. I've known that. Yeah, I've known that card's two dollars. It's been that way for a while. Yeah, this card is sweet yeah. in uh, commander. 
It's a TLDR blue, Corbin um, finds out about cards that spike six months after on a finance titanium. podcast. Anyway. I'm not talking about it spiking. Ooh. I just I'm just mentioning Ooh. it as another sweet card in the set. Get out of here, you child. It, it might be as good as Song of the Dryad or Darksteel Bug, but uh, I'm glad it, someone else there. calls it Darksteel Bug. Yeah. I only started that because I listened to this cast. I have no idea what the name <laughs> of the card is. It's Dark, Dark Steel, Steel Bug. Mutation. I like Dark Steel Bug. Also, I name I... Dark Steel Bug sounds like the name of a deck that Corbin named. What? Because someone played Sultai and he's like, it's Dark Steel Bug. Sultai mid range is what it'll end up being called. We named The Rock The Rock this weekend. You should be proud. Because Sol Maka was playing it, the creator of The Rock. So we, we actually started the weekend that. calling it Black Green Midrange. You didn't call it Obzom Midrange? No, we started the weekend calling it Black Green Midrange. And as soon as Sol Maka was 8-0, no, we were like, nope, it's The Rock for the rest of the weekend. Can you smell what The Rock is cooking? Oh, a bunch of shitty movies. Cool. <laughs> I love Rock. Because that's what he does now. was great. What? The Tooth Fairy was great. I watched oh, Rampage, and it was kind of fun. Oh, shut up. No, Rampage the tooth... was terrible. Come on, The Tooth Fairy... Yeah, the Tooth Fairy was good. It's a poor man's Mighty Ducks. What? Why? You see, you always bring up the third best hockey movie of all time. I don't understand. What's one? It. Okay, number one is Slapshot, okay, two. and number two is Youngblood. And Everybody not, and knows that. It's not that. even close I agree, I agree. What's two? Not Youngblood. Oh, okay. No, Sudden Death. Okay. Well, Sudden Death? <laughs> Yes, Absolutely. with Jungle on Van Dam and Powers Boot. I will fill your mouth little with girl, spiders, little girl. Fill your mouth girl. with spiders. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there you go. Fuck yeah. Anyways, all right. It was John Claude Van Damme, and it was it was the Blackhawks versus the Penguins playing in a Stanley Cup final. They didn't play in because the Blackhawks got dismantled the year before that movie came out. <laughs> no, and he's not even a cop. He's a firefighter. <laughs> yeah, can, but he can roundhouse people. That's pretty they funny. can play goalie for some reason. That's pretty good. Actually. He just wore the pads. Yeah. Fuck, All right. Fuck. Well, sudden death. Uh, uh, DJ, I, DJ, I, did you go yet? Has somebody gone? Let's do this. Come on. Pick. You just don't want to talk about hockey movies from the '90s, and that's bullshit. <laughs> Didn't your grandfather invent hockey or some my shit? My grandfather worked. In the we have Jones. reached the point of Jason's inebriation where we should probably tuck him into bed. So my breaking ball <laughs> go, is go also ahead. from Eldritch Moon. It is a rare card, and the Card Kingdom buy list is eighty cents. If I give away anything else, it gives it away. It's a rare. It's a, my my breaking bulk is a rare from Eldritch Moon also, and it is. You can't tell us a name on the it. Card Kingdom imprisoned no, in the, the card moon. Kingdom buy price is eighty <laughs> cents, and it is a casual card. Splendid recognition. It has twelve. It has twelve thousand uh, decks on EDH almost. trick, and I got this breaking bulk courtesy of our old editor Matt, who I got to meet this weekend. Sigarda's aid. No. Anafenza. No. And Offensa is a cons of Tarkir card, so... Yeah, that... Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm just throwing that out there for our Discord. 80... <laughs> how many cents it's is it? Only, Splendid this Reclamation. Is, this is this card's only printing. It's just from Eldritch Moon. It's it's a rare... What's... Splendid, Splendid Reclamation. Reclamation. I'm out then. I don't know. Gyre Sanitarium. Go, is it really? Yeah. Gyre cool. Sanitarium That's has sweet. a buy price of 80 cents the tcg market it's a dollar retail yep. yeah uh nice yeah this card's just that's a low spread motherfucker i don't think it's, it's a spread. pick i don't think you just buy them at like an aggressive no, amount no. it's just a card you ship to card kingdom that's it but like yeah. matt's been talking about this card for a while he has like 30 foils which i think is a poor decision um but it's dj hates everything the foils are cool though the foils are sweet it's just a card that you uh, ship out, and it's something that I thought was a bulk rare. He brought it up to me in Atlanta, and I was like, that's a bulk rare. He's like, nope, they pay a lot of money on it. I mean, it was a bulk rare a year ago. It's not now. It's kind of Didn't cool. Metallica make a shitty song called Sanitarium? Nobody knows. All right, I've got another question here before we go from UMA for somebody. Uh, Bruno asked us this on Twitter. As a high-end collector, my main question would be when is the best time to buy some of the masterpieces? The set is weird, but I'm not sure if I should wait for the prices to tank a bit. I would wait. Oh yeah, they're going to be very. I think they're going to be way. I can't more verify common. Bruno's following me on Twitter, so I can't <laughs> answer that question. The the screens is he a patron? Wavy. He can't even tell. The screens just like. All right, so uh, everybody, if you're wondering where pick of the week is, we we went a little long this week, so we did do them though. They're on the spreadsheet, which you can access if you're a patron. Anything else you guys want to touch on before we get out of here this week? All right. Rob, thanks for coming on, man. Anything else you want to say? Where can people find you and all that good stuff? Uh, I'm available on Twitter at 
at the Imperial Jawa. And uh, that's about it. All right. So, uh, well, and the Imperial I'm also, I'm Jawas also on, can I'm, be this precise. I'm also, exactly. And I'm also on the Discord as Dwight Fry. All right. There you go, everybody. Well, you and have the, zero actually, tweets. You know what? And if you see me on the Reddit as Tim Prodigal Sorcerer, that's who I am on the Reddit as well. <laughs> Good to know. I, that I'm your Reddit. only follower on Twitter right now, and you have zero tweets. What, why even give us your Twitter? <laughs> your Twitter I, might as well not exist. No, it might as well not. I just follow a million people. So. I mean, some people use Twitter that way, but there you go. You've been on Twitter for two years, and you have no. I'm your only follower. That's impressive. That's, that's actually, yeah. Yeah, and I'm gonna block him as soon as we as soon as we get done with this. I'm gonna block him because reason. You should. That's... I was the first person you followed. You followed me before you followed Mark Rosewater. Jesus, that's adorable. Anyways, oh, everybody, this is your UMA episode of Brainstorm Brewery. May we never have to talk about it again, but I'm sure we will. Thanks for listening. We'll see you all next week where we can talk standard from the Pro Tour, everyone's favorite. I don't care for standard. DJ is pumped. I know it. I'm gonna skip next week. I would love it if you skipped a week, DJ. <laughs> See you in two weeks, DJ. <laughs> <laughs>